During the Steam era, there have been thousands of Steam locomotive class serviced across North America. From small switchers to backbone freighters, hotshot streamliners to monster melees, the amount of classes produced was... vast. Despite the many iconic classes of locomotives, there have been many that have been forgotten the time or just glossed over from the regular rail fan. In this video, I'll cover a few classes of locomotives which, in my opinion, are quite obscure and should get some recognition. Note, some of these locomotives will have short segments given that most of the ones I'll be covering won't have as much information due to their obscurity, but I'll cover them to the best way of my advantage. With out of the way, let's jump into it, shall we? We'll be starting off small with the Chicago and Illinois Midlands 440s. Ah yes, the American 440. Such a classic design that went from this to this. With three of these built in 1927 by Baldwin, they were the last new Americans built for any North American railroad. This wheel design was long since obsolete, seeing as around that time, Northerns and Hudsons were all the big talk. Yet you had this Midwest Railroad ordering small, efficient 440s for passenger service. Huh. They were employed on passenger service between Springfield and Peoria, Illinois, usually operating two to three cars. They were quite the step up when it came to 440s, with outside Wall Street's valve gear and 64 inch drivers, they were quite modern for their type. But by the late 1940s, passenger numbers were dwindling, which would result in two services being reduced to one weekday round trip. Seeing as only two locomotives were needed now, this resulted in 501 being sold for scrap in 1950. But the last passenger train running in 1953 would see the end for the small iron horses. A rather unfortunate end for these three, given that they were the last of the rather obsolete yet timeless wheel arrangement. But similar designs have been preserved across the US, so... Next up are the Nickel Plate Roads L1 Hudsons. The Hudsons are heavily popularized by the Canadian Pacific and especially the New York Central, but the Nickel Plate's L1s usually get thrown under the radar. Being built in the same year as the iconic New York Central Hudsons themselves, four L1As were built by Alco, with four L1Bs built by Lima two years later. They were employed on the road's heavy passenger trains, but they saw some use on freight service. Around the 1940s, the Hudsons were fitted with some stylish smoke deflectors, which made them look slightly elegant like a small version of the New York Central Niagara. However, their time on passenger service was cut short when they were replaced by newer Alco PAs, as they were eventually bumped down the freight service before they were all retired around the 1950s. However, unlike most classes covered here, one of them was fortunate enough to survive into preservation, that being L1A number 170, which was donated to the Museum of Transportation in 1957 by the Nickel Plate themselves. And ever since, 170 still remains on static display, amongst the dozens of forgotten locomotives at the museum. While people often talk about the Berkshires or 587, 170, let alone the Nickel Plate Road's L1 Hudsons were a prime example of how great a class of Hudsons were. Next up, we're going to the northeastern United States with the New York Central's A2 Berkshires. Whenever we think of Berkshires, we think of the Nickel Plate Road, the Pierre Marquette, or if there's something weird about you, the Boston Maine. But the New York Central 7A2 Berkshires were rather late to the steam party. Built in 1948 by Alco, they were the last new steam locomotives built for New York Central, and the last new steam locomotives built in Alco Shidekity. Shidekity. That name's works. They were employed on coal drags and had rather uneventful lives. Their design was heavily based off the New York Central's Niagara's, with a different cab, lack of smoke deflectors, 65 inch drivers, and a different tender. However, given the fact they were rather late to the party, they did succumb to the event of dieselization, and because of that, the Berkshires were all retired in 1957 and were subsequently scrapped. A rather forgotten class for New York Central, and one thing that got me thinking though was, if the class was well produced, what do you guys think it would have been named? I mean, we have Hudson's, Mohawks, and Niagara's. Would these be nicknamed like Erie's? Pittsburgh's? Buffalo's? Hmm. You know what? Why don't we just call these the New York Central Buffalo's? I mean, it kind of does sound like a fitting name. They, their design does kind of remind me of a buffalo. Back to the Hudson's, we have a rather odd one-off. That being the Illinois Central's number one. Ever heard of a Hudson design for freight service? Well, the IC apparently had one. Number one originally started off as Berkshire number 7038, which was built by Lima in 1926 as one of 50 new Berkshires. The class was rather known for rough riding, and the Illinois Central wanted to fix their problems. 
1937, 7038 was rebuilt into a 464 as an experiment to try and fix the oscillation. However, with attractive effort of 68,360 pounds, this put too much weight on the small drivers, which resulted in wheel slipping. AKA, it was too powerful to the point where it couldn't even get a good grip on the rails. However, two years later in 1939, the locomotive was modified to fix the weight issues and reduce cylinder diameter. And by 1945, the locomotive was put on the passenger service and renumbered to 2499. Even with the modifications, it wasn't enough to spare her, as she was retired in 1949 and scrapped. Yeah, maybe keep the Hudson's on passenger service, please. Now into the more unique stuff, starting off with the Boston Albanese tank engines. In North America, tank engines are rather rare compared to somewhere like Britain as they were less powerful compared to a regular 060 switcher. The only exceptions were shop switchers, in city ports, or in this case on suburban commuter lines. The Boston Albany first ordered 10266 tank engines across the L1A and L1B class in 1907 by Alcon. They were eventually rebuilt though in 1928 to 1931, which includes superheaters and increasing the cylinder size and boiler pressure to make them more powerful for the commuter services. The second class of tank engines were 5D1As built by Alco in 1928. These locomotives had a powerful design, which was basically if you took a New York Central Hudson and crammed it down into a tank engine. Yeah, that's literally what this was. Surprisingly, its performance was impressive, as some sources state that the locomotives could handle 20 coaches and would outbeat 462 Pacifics on a regular basis. Heh, <laughs> who would have known that a tank engine would outbeat a tender engine by any day? However, when diesels took over the commuter operation on the B&M, the tank engines were all retired by the 1950s. For tank engines, they really proved that little engines could do big things. The last one we'll cover is not one, but two locomotives, those being Baltimore and Ohio's number one and two. Talk about the British influencing the Americans. Both locomotives were designed by the Baltimore and Ohio's own Mount Clair shops from 1934 to 1935 with number one being designated as a J1 Jubilee, and number two as a V2 Hudson. Both locomotives were designed by George Emerson, who had taken inspiration off of British locomotives, more particularly Great Western number 6000, King George V, which was visiting the United States during 1927. Both locomotives were assigned to haul the road's new lightweight trains. For number one, Lady Baltimore, it was the Abraham Lincoln, and number two, Lord Baltimore, the Royal Blue. While number two was a bit more successful, number one though wasn't so lucky, as due to its poor adhesion, it resulted in a lot of wheel slip. Nonetheless, both locomotives continued into service well throughout the Second World War on smaller passenger trains until both were retired and finally scrapped in 1949. A rather quiet end for these passenger engines. Not gonna lie, number two would have been a nice fit for preservation, seeing as the B&O did promote the locomotive when it was new and looked the best out of the two. I can't say the same for number one. George Emerson's locomotives never really went anywhere, and as a result, more American and more conventional looking locomotives came out for the B&O. Although the British designs did carry out onto the Delaware and Hudson, which I might cover those locomotives one day. Emerson did design another locomotive, but well, you get the idea. From the Midwestern Americans to the Forgone Berkshires, the one of the kind to the tough tank engines, there are many classes rail fans forgotten about. And it's because of these reasons, in my opinion, I think they should be remembered for how unique or odd they are. And believe me, there are a lot more classes of obscure locomotives, and maybe I'll talk about those one day. Who knows? <laughs>